Martinez, and I want to welcome you to my kitchen. Today we're going to make alcapurrias, delicious, crispy yuca fritters filled with a pork picadillo. We're going to finish this whole thing off with an absolutely fabulous salt cod fritter. Bacalaitos. Daisy Cooks is brought to you by... As Daisy says, eat great, feel great, look great. Marshalls, brand names for less. All clad metal crafters. All clad is bonded construction. All clad is innovative design. All clad is professional equipment. All clad is a state of mind. Brillo with Oxy Action. For tough messes, Oxy Micro Bubbles lift and dissolve grease and grime. Brillo, cleaning solutions for your home for over 90 years. Diageo, as Daisy says, eat great, feel great, look great. And if you drink, drink responsibly. Diageo, celebrating life every day, responsibly. Hola, as a Puerto Rican, I'd never miss an opportunity to visit the island. But if you're not, and you're thinking of visiting the island, one of the great times to visit the island is during one of the feast days. And my favorite, one of my favorite feast days is La Fiesta de San Juan Bautista, the Feast of John the Baptist. It takes place in June, and on that day, people believe that the water surrounding the island becomes sacred. So at midnight, everybody heads down to the beach, and there's this huge party going on, and everybody holds hand and kind of walks back into the surf and falls back and lets the holy waters of the ocean just bathe them and bless them and it's just unbelievable. So today we're going to be making a couple of these little feast foods, um, my favorite of which is the alcapurria. The alcapurria is a little fritter made out of yuca stuffed with a delicious spicy filling, whether it's pork, it could be chicken, sometimes it's crab. <gasps> alcapurria de wedges. Oh my god, I'm, I'm dying. I love yuca. There's nothing you can't do with a potato that you can't do with a yuca. Better. And you can get it in the supermarkets frozen now in your ethnic aisles. They're really, really good. Let me show you how to handle a yuca. As you would a potato, just peel this waxy skin. The wax is preserved like you would do a cucumber. You know how the cucumbers have that waxy thing to help them last longer? Well, it's pretty much the same deal. The texture of a yuca is buttery. It's creamier than any potato I've ever tasted. It is nothing short of amazing. I have yuca flying all over the place. I'm so excited because I have a special visitor coming to visit today. Esmeralda Santiago is going to be visiting with us today. I'm making alcapurias for Esmeralda Santiago. Oh, my God. She's a woman, a Puerto Rican, who wrote a book that I wish I had had available to me when I was a young girl because it just, it was the most amazing. I went out and bought this book for everybody that I knew and made them read it. Okay? And we're good to go. We'll trim the ends off this yuca. And it cuts just like a potato, guys. We're just going to cut it into pieces that are, you know, like manageable, because I'm going to be grating these. And we're going to put them in a little salt water. OK, and this is the fun part. When I was a little girl, any time that there was grating to be done, it immediately becomes a family affair. And you give the soft vianda to the little kids, and you, you know, warn them, watch your knuckles and watch your nails. Don't lose one in there. The yuca was usually the one that I got stuck with. One thing, though, you really can't do this way, way ahead of time because the grated tuber will oxidize much like a potato and turn black and then give your frituras an ugly color. And you know me, I keep telling you, I'm all about the pretty. When it comes to my food, it's got to be pretty. And I think I better quit while I still have all my knuckles and my nails. And we've got some beautiful masa here. Masa is like the batter. 
Now I wanted to keep that beautiful, gorgeous color, so I want to get this done as quickly as possible. Let's make some achote oil. These are called achote seeds, also known as annatto seeds, and we use them in Latin American cooking instead of saffron. It gives your food that beautiful yellow-orange color, and it adds a distinct flavor, a nuttiness that is missing in saffron. I have some olive oil, and because we're going to treat this with gentle heat, it doesn't bother me to use olive oil. We're gonna wait for this just to get a little heat, and it's gonna give me insane color. And once you see the achote oil start to bubble, we're gonna lower that heat. Now, as simple as achote oil is to make, you just can't put it on the stove and forget about it. If the achote seeds are allowed to burn, you will end up with black seeds, green oil, and what's left is good for nothing but the garbage can. So let's just watch this. Okay, it's starting to get happy. You see it's starting to get fuzzy and foamy over here? That's what we're looking for. I'm going to lower the heat on this now so we can watch the color. So there we have it, achote oil. And this is one of those life-changing ingredients that you can keep in your fridge and impress all your friends and neighbors. I'm going to add just a little bit of the achote oil in here for the filling of our alcapurias. And then over here, I'm going to add enough achote oil to make the batter interesting. And I'm just gonna mix it up. Look at this. Is that not a painting? I'm thinking there must be a poet out there somewhere that can be inspired to write something about how gorgeous achote is. Okay, and I'm gonna season. We like salt. It's our friend. Mix that in. And this is the perfect consistency you want for your masa. You don't want a masa that's so runny that it's gonna splatter all over the place when you set it to fry. And you know, your acapurias are gonna fall apart. It's nice and dry. It holds an indentation when you poke it. You see that? That's the consistency that you want. Okay, and I'm just going to cover that with a little sheet of plastic and we will get back to that alcapurria masa in just a second. I'm gonna make the filling for my alcapurria. Now, as I mentioned before, you can fill your acapurria with a lot of different fillings. I'm going to be making a pork filling today, pork picadillo, which is the most common. Okay, so we're going to add a little bit of sofrito, you know, my secret weapon that I keep in the freezer. Sofrito is an aromatic puree of onions, garlic, tomatoes, sweet red bell peppers, green peppers, ajicitos dulces if you can find them, cilantro, and culantro. Or if you can't find culantro, you could use more cilantro. Going right in there. And we're gonna cook the water out of it. Let's lower that heat. Woo, it smells good. And the only way you're gonna know that is to do this for yourself. So run, don't walk. I have a pound of ground pork. We're going to brown and use for our filling for our alcapurias. And picadillo is something that, if you have picadillo left over, honey, don't throw it out. You're gonna wanna save it. There's nothing you can't fill with picadillo. And this is like a real basic picadillo. I'm gonna add a couple of tablespoons of alcaparrado that olive salad with the capers that I tell you about all the time, chopped up so that you know it's really worked in. We could raise this heat now a little bit. Now we're gonna add about two tablespoons of tomato paste to bring this together. Make sure that the tomato paste really works into the meat. I wanna add a little salt to this because I told you our food is not shy Woo, it smells like heaven in here. Let's lower that and I'm gonna taste it for seasoning. That's cooking with gas heat. Woo, that's good. Oh my goodness, is that good. There I go tooting my horn again. For somebody who says they don't like to toot their own horn, I sure do it an awful lot around here. The picadillo is done. Okay, we're just about ready to 
make the alcapurrias, but before we do that, I'm just about ready to introduce my special guest, Esmeralda Santiago, who's written a series of books. The first one, When I Was Puerto Rican, which moved me and inspired me so much. And she's got a new book just coming out now. So I'm going to meet and greet Esmeralda Santiago in my kitchen. Hola, niña. ¿Cómo hola, estás? hola, hola, hola. Oh, oh, so, so wonderful to see you. Gracias. Nice to meet you. Oh, meet you. Listen to me. The trick is going to be me not starting to cry because I'm the girl who cries at dishwasher commercials, you know? <laughs> I got to tell you, when I finished reading your last book, The Turkish Lover, which is out now, I got to the last page and I turned it. And I turn and I and I'm looking at the back of the cover saying there has to be more. What happens next? And I have a copy of the Turkish Lover here. And I found out that this is Esmeralda's picture. She usually puts a picture of herself on the covers of the book, and she's just so gorgeous and so beautiful and so talented and so amazing. I'm gonna get a swell to head. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm gonna make a capurias for you, and I want you to tell me a little bit about Esmeralda explains the Puerto Rican experience for her coming here from the island, her childhood on the island, and the whole story just resonated just through and through me. It was my aunts, it was my uncles, it was my grandmother, it was the lushness of the island. I, I was there. I'm hearing coquis going. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, it's happening. So I'm going to make some alcapurias, and good. you're going to tell me about... Yes. First of all, it looks fantastic. I love the wonderful saffron color of the achiote. R isn't that wonderful? Which is so good, and it smells so delicious here. La expresión dice... Me huele, pero no me sabe. I todavía. use that all the time. <laughs> me huele, pero no me sabe. I can smell it, but I can't I'm taste it yet. I'm not tasting it yet, but it's really beautiful. It looks wonderful. And this is a very traditional Puerto Rican dish. And the thing that is so special about it is that it does say celebration. Doesn't for it? For some reason. It's, it's like party every food. celebration, you just, it's party food. It's Absolutely. finger food. It has a special flavor. And everybody just adds their own little piquancy to it. Absolutely. And, uh, I've seen them made with raisins inside yeah. or some people add heat, you yes. know. And with cheese for the vegetarians. Right, in, in right, the right. I forgot audience. to mention that. Mm -hmm. So tell me where you found the voice because I, I just wish that as a younger girl I would have had your book to look to, you know? Well, thank you. I think what actually what made me a writer was that I wished I had a book like that to read. When I was here in the United States, the first few years trying to learn culture, learn language, and trying to get used to a completely different environment and, and a different way of being, which is what we must all learn when we come here from another country. Mm -hmm. And so it was that really in response to my own questions that I began to write and as a way for me to understand what was happening to me. And to tell you the truth, a mí ni se me ocurrió. I never imagined that other people would be interested in this experience because when you're going through it, you feel so alone in it. And so when I was writing about it, I realized, wow, you know, I really had so many questions and I didn't have anyone to ask them of. Right. And so that my response has been to write these questions that I had and try to answer them. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for doing that. You've given me so much with your books and your literature, and now I'm making alcapurias for you. <laughs> and you know what? I heard that you don't spend a lot of time in the kitchen. You know what I'm going to do? I'm right. going to teach you how to make alcapurias. How's that? Que bueno. <laughs> well, that my mother will be proud. There you go. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. <laughs> Excellent. They're really easy. Um, you know, I used any little trick that I can use. and This is very smart. Doesn't that work well? Yeah, because it doesn't get stuck in your right. fingers. Right. And your you can really shape them. And yeah. I can put them, slide them right into the oil, which right. I have over here in a pan okay. next to me, and just make a little indentation. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna add some picadillo. Which looks fabulous. Oh girl, you gotta taste that. I'm telling oh, you. I love it's the little amazing. morrones. You see inside, it? You see it? Pimientos. This girl doesn't beautiful. miss a trick, let me just tell you that. She is all over well, this alcapurria. Uh, well, I may not be a great cook, but I'm a great eater. There so. you go. <laughs> okay, I'm happy with that. You come to my kitchen, you have to be a great eater. <laughs> and I'm just gonna, with the back of my spoon, just shape it you know, till it's all the picadillo is tucked in. One of the lines that have stayed with me from your book, I was up at about two o'clock in the morning reading The Turkish Lover and totally lost it. You had had uh, differences with your mom, mm -hmm. as most daughters often do. And you said that your mother had gone to your apartment and the line I think went, she served me a plate full of love. Mm. Well, <laughs> I completely lost. Woo! My husband comes running in from the bedroom. What's the matter? He's, I'm crying and old, you know. 
This is so beautiful. Oh my God. <laughs> well, that's it. Well, that's but that's, it. this is what food does, you know, especially the traditional foods that your mother prepares for you, that your parents, your grandparents that's prepare right. for you. It really is the way they love you. That's it. They that's put it. it. I have memories of my mother actually and my grandmother putting things into my mouth. Oh. I couldn't even hold them in my hand, just put them right into my mouth. Are my so kids watching this? Are you listening? <laughs> and and I knew that this is how I'm loved. It's not just the words and it's not just the touch. It is, it but is. it's giving you it something is. they've prepared. That that's so special and, and it's Don't make me girl, flavor. don't make me cry. Come over here and make the Santa Pur here. <laughs> okay, aquí lo pongo en la mano. Mm -hmm. And we so got... I take with a spoon. Right, and just till it Apple. feels right. Okay. I just want to check my oil. I'm okay. gonna put and I got this little test thing oh, for so what does that do? You see how oh. it's bubbling? I know. How smart. I'm learning. There you wow. go. Oh, I've gotta try that. Oh, one of these days I'll make a full meal for somebody. <laughs> No, I can make alcapurrias. There you go. So You're going to be the head big of enough? Well, what yeah. do you think? How does it feel in your hand? It, it feels big enough, yeah. but I wanted to make it a little flatter. How's okay. That? okay. Yeah. You can play with and it, Esmeralda. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it's like, yeah, you just want to feel it. I don't want to be too stingy with no, the meat, No, you want right? some meat in there. So now this is the part that I think is going to be trickiest. Curling it? Yeah, and you know what? Just use your use your spoon. That'll oh, help you. Oh, okay. La, la cuchara tiene manteca. You ah, know, it's oily, see. the back of the spoon, so oh, you can actually... Oh, very smart. Go ahead. So that really, I can push it in. Yeah, so right off the paper. Oh, good. That's where the wax paper comes in really handy. It does, Otherwise, you get it, it... It doesn't stick, and it mm -hmm. doesn't fall through your fingers. Which, if you want to add uh, a little more masa, I hope my mother is not seeing <laughs> If Mommy. she is, she's going to be really impressed. She's much better at this than I That's am. That's first time but making an alcapurria, Mom. Cut the girl yeah. some slack. Yeah, right. Well, you know, usually I just let her do it, and then I say, Mommy, you know how much I love you. Make me an alcapurria. Oh, okay. So I pull the same thing with my mom. <laughs> so. she, this is, girl, look at you but making okay. alcapurrias. Yeah, hey. There you go with your bed. I'm going to show this to my kids. <laughs> Mommy can make alcapurrias. Mm -hmm. so we're just going to so roll it right off. Oh, and this. There we go. Gorgeous. Wow, and, and I'm the gonna sound. Put, I, isn't that great? <gasps> You've just made this so quickly, and oh. I always think of alcapurias as something that takes all day, but the fact is that the scraping of the yuca is probably the most time consuming, That's but it most, didn't take you that long. Not at all, no. not at all. It's definitely manageable. Yeah. When we put all the alcapurias in, it actually brings the temperature of the oil down a few oh. notches. And then I adjust the heat accordingly, because you don't want a furious boil. You want it to be hot enough so that you have a nice crispy outside, mm -hmm. but a nice delicious buttery mm -hmm. jucai yeah. inside. I think I'm ready to turn these. And I want to do it ever so gently, because I want them to look pretty for you. Oh, look at the color. You like that? Yeah. This oh. was just regular canola oil. The masa now has colored the oil. Isn't that incredible? Oh, yeah. But again, you know, talking about the sounds of the cooking, when you first put them in, the sizzle was a lot sharper. And now it's just taking on kind of this gentle, it's almost like the sound of rain. It's the sound of rain. Oh, my God. I think I'm getting hot again. <laughs> and that looks pretty good to me. Look at that. That looks fabulous. Isn't that great? Yeah. It's beautiful. It's it done. It does, yeah. It's it looks done. great. This one's yeah. yours. I'm leaving yeah, this one over here. Okay. I may take a picture of it and send it to your mom. <laughs> Your acapurria is the best looking one of all. <laughs> Girl never made an acapurria in her life, comes into my kitchen and totally shows me up. No, look, no, look at this. Beginner's look. Yes. Gorgeous. Nice. You know what this needs? Some vinagre. Vinagre. <laughs> I got some. Vinagre is just a little condiment made with pineapple rinds that you'd usually throw out. I'm gonna splash some on and get you a napkin. You know what's really difficult for me, as Menalda, when I do this, is being able to talk with my mouth watering I so much. And I'm sitting there going, I'm like, like, oh, I really no. want some of this. I'm like spitting, you know, <laughs> it's like, oh no. Are you ready? Oh, it's crunchy, ladies and gentlemen. Mmm. Mm. Oh, this is fabulous. <laughs> I love how the masa is chewy. You know, first you get the crunch, mm. then you get the chew. The chewy, and mm. then the flavor of the meat inside, inside. with the sofrito and... It's like Cracker Jacks, right? There's a surprise inside. <laughs> mm. Magnifico. Mm. Thank you so much, Thank Camila. you, and thank you for this wonderful, wonderful cooking, which has brought me back to La Isla. Don't make me cry, girl. And Don't I, make me cry. I, I won't say another one. <laughs> thank you so much. Gracias. Gracias a ti. Y buen provecho. Gracias. <laughs> Now we're gonna make bacalaitos, a little salt cod fritter that is absolutely fabulous and it's on the menu at every party that I throw. But first, let's talk a little about bacalao. Salt cod is probably the fish that fed history. 
There isn't a culture or a nationality that I know of that doesn't use it in one way or another. You find bacalao in a, a number of different ways. This is a whole side of bacalao. I mean, with fins and tail attached. Here, you have the end pieces, not a, a lot of meat on them. Here's a beautiful belly piece. You see that nice, thick, but it's still rather dry. Here's a piece of bacalao, salt cod, that's been soaked. And you see, once you let it sit in water, it becomes pliable. That's a big difference from this one, which is rather stiff. Okay, and the way you prepare bacalao, take the bacalao, set it in cold water and put it to the boil. Let it boil maybe two or three minutes. You dump the water and you refresh it with cold water. Repeat the process, dump it the second time, and then fill up with cold water the third time. I find that I get pretty good results with bacalao. I get most of the salt out. And over here, I have a piece of bacalao that I've cooked after having soaked it and I am going to flake a little bit more bacalao and give you the warning that when you do flake bacalao, really take your time, don't be in a rush because you don't want to lose a bone in there and have somebody, you know, the old hocus pocus, fish bones chocus thing, you know? So really break it apart, you want, you want it in little pieces. This has a beautiful, mild getting flavor. My... The texture is really, really pretty. I just want to step over here and mix my bacalaito batter together. I have two teaspoons of baking powder, and I'm going to add that to some flour, a little bit of salt, of course, to taste, and just going to mix that a little bit. I have water. I'm whisking around. And I have some cilantro because I want to give my bacalaitos a nice perky little flavor, stems and all. I love bacalaitos with a little garlicky mojito, some ají, or even some vinagre. My son David, who's a teenager and feeling his oats, went to put ketchup on my bacalaitos one day and I just drew the line. Sorry, you can't do that. Okay, let's add our batter. Ketchup on bacalaitos. Salsa, at least, for goodness sakes. And we're gonna mix that in. Very pretty, and I'm just gonna give this a second to come together. So let's make sure this oil is ready. I think it is, but okay, we see bubbles, happy bubbles. Because we're deep frying, I like to use canola oil. It really has a very high smoke point and it won't break down. And we really want the oil to be hot enough that it's going to seal the bacalaito. I don't want a flour dumpling soaking up the oil that's in the pan. But that looks like a pretty happy bubble. Okay, my bacalaito batter set up really, really nicely. And I have a nice big tablespoon here, and I'm just gonna drop my batter. Okay, here we go. And this is pretty much the rate at which you want the bacalaito to fry. Otherwise, it'll get too brown on the outside, and then the inside is still pasty and doughy. We want to cook the flour through. You can't have the oil so hot that when you pour the batter in, the batter disperses. So you really need to keep it at a medium heat, even if it takes the fritters a little longer to fry. I think I have room for one more in there. And they kind of float up to the top. I just want to watch them for color. Look at these bobbing around. They look like little zeppelis, don't they? Only they're savory. So good. And you want to cook your bacalaitos until they're nice and crisp and golden. Okay, these have just maybe another minute or so left, but it still feels a little heavy, so I'm gonna give it another second. And if it feels heavy for you, that's a little clue that the dough on the inside, the batter, hasn't gotten beautiful and spongy and light. How does that look? Is that pretty color for you? Let's set it over here. Uh, these look absolutely beautiful, and they're light as a feather. These are like nice and puffy. Aren't they pretty? I wanna try well, they're still hot. I always treat myself to one. Look how beautiful that is. Mmm. It's a perfect little snack. You need to make this, you need to make it now. But no ketchup. Mm -mm. Fry yourself up a couple of bacalaitos, and you're good to go. Buen provecho. Daisy Cooks, Latin flavors that will rock your world, contains over 200 of her detailed recipes. With each order, you also get a Daisy Cooks DVD at no additional cost. It includes the never broadcast Daisy Pilot and three favorite shows. To order, call 800-336-1917. The price is $29.95.
You can also order the Daisy Cooks book with free DVD at her website, daisycooks.com. Hola, it's Daisy. Hey, I'd love to hear from you. You can reach me at daisycooks.com. Tell me what you think. Sign up for my newsletter and get recipes and tips in English and Spanish. It's all at daisycooks.com. Daisy Cooks is brought to you by... As Daisy says, eat great, feel great, look great. Marshalls, brand names for less. All clad metal crafters. All clad is bonded construction. All clad is innovative design. All clad is professional equipment. All clad is a state of mind. Brillo with Oxy Action. For tough messes, Oxy micro bubbles lift and dissolve grease and grime. Brillo, cleaning solutions for your home for over 90 years. Diageo, as Daisy says, eat great, feel great, look great. And if you drink, drink responsibly. Diageo, celebrating life every day responsibly.